Krishna for the pleasure of Srila Gurudev and all the assembled Vaishnavas. If I could have two microphones passed over for the play. Um, the young children, the young children from the community are going to put on a play that was uh, uh, compiled from the writings of our beloved Gurudev Radha is making a beautiful gown for Krishna. Vrinda is helping. Take this garland and give it to Krishna. <laughs> what a beautiful garland. Or I have to make this garland to Krishna or I have or I have. It's super. I could ask him. Deva, will you take this sign to give it to Krishna? Why, yes, of course. Vrinda is thinking that Subal is a Kriya Namasaka. He is very dear to Krishna. If Subal takes and gives it to Krishna, then Krishna will become pleased. Krishna is sitting at Radha Kun playing dance. But what is impossible? 
if we are very anxious to do something to give pleasure to Krishna, what is impossible? Krishna can do and undo things. Nothing is impossible for him. He gives pure intelligence. The Gita describes Teshan Satata Yuktanam, Bajitam Priti Purvatam, Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam, Yena Mamu Payanti Te. To those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. So the intelligence came to Subal what should be done. Subal has the same appearance as Radharani. The keen eyes of Radha's mother-in-law Jatila and sister-in-law Kutila are there on Radharani. Now that Radharani was dressed in Subal's clothes, she looks just like Subal. She then makes her way to Radha Kund dressed as Subal.
good sweet pastimes of Krishna meeting in Radha Kunda. My blessings in future they should understand what is love. Especially they love us in future. Now they cannot. But future they may. My blessings. Thank you.
speak about the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Give him. As we know, Gurudev has been speaking somewhat about the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He started his class two days ago with a verse from the Adi Lila in Chaitanya Charamrita. We know the essence of this verse is that Lord Chaitanya has appeared in this world to give what no incarnation has ever given before. Sublime knowledge of the taste of his service and of his love. We are so very fortunate because this verse in Adi Lila also instructs us that this gift has been not given for such a long, long time. Apparently since the day of Brahma, so some four billion years ago. We also know that this gift is so rare and so precious that even Brahma, Narad and Sukadev want it. Uddhav also wants it. On Krishna's instruction, he travelled to Vrindavan and met the Rajavasi. What he saw there blew his mind, he could not comprehend. He became so happy because he was so fortunate to witness the great love that the Rajavasis have. And he realised that he could not console them because the tears that they were shedding for Krishna in separation were actually the greatest fortune. So how could he tell them to stop crying because they, what they were doing was perfect? So he was happy but he was also overwhelmed. If we see a very, very big, great mountain, we may say, oh, what a beautiful mountain, it is so high. But at the thought of ascending this mountain, we become very overwhelmed. This was how Uddhav was feeling. But we are so fortunate because Mahaprabhu has appeared and he has given us the means by which to ascend this great mountain of Unach Balaras. This very, very rare and precious gift. But Gurudev has instructed us many times that we can, and also Sankracharya has instructed us when he said, Bhaje Govinda, Bhaje Govinda, Bhaje Govinda, Mudhamate. Mm -hmm. Do not worship Govinda, worship Govinda, worship Govinda. Our intellectual jugglery will not take us here. Only by chanting and remembering and performing devotional activities under the guidance of Srila Gurudev and by following the footsteps of those who are carrying out the mission of Mahaprabhu may we even get close. The first line of this verse is Anampitam Churim Charat. Anampitam, what does this mean? It means to give. Churat, what does it mean? Not for a long time. We also see in Adi Lila the verse Hari Purata Sundara. Hari, as you all know, has many meanings. But here we can understand that it means powerful lion. So similarly, Rupa Goswami prays to Lord Chaitanya. Oh Hari, you are the powerful lion. And just as when a lion roars, all the mad elephants free. When you roar, so the our Nathas and Thank you. <laughs> that lady like lady devotion like Chandramukhi, her sister, and also what name? Damodar Priya. Other ladies would be ready to preach our mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As in past Ganga Mata Thakurani. Janava Thakurani, Thim Lata and so many have done this. So, my heart is blessed to you. Very briefly, you should preach at very fast. <laughs> Go from a... I know so many qualified ladies also. So many qualified male devotees also. They should come forward and preach the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As in the time of Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj. Also, oh, I saw a banner, Sri Giraj Gauriyamat. I want that Tapan Mishra, Premananda Prabhu, Jagadish Pandey, new Brahmachari. They should come after this festival, they should be in Giraj Gaudiyamat there. And uh, Gaur Pramad. And I have requested Mahaprabhu and all others, they should invite devotees, 
bring preacher from India also, from here also. There are so many qualified, Dinpandu Prabhu and others. Brajvalla Prabhu should be invited there and they should preach the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So I request all that you should be in one opinion and make that center oh, very well that our preacher from India here, then they will come and stay there until a big place is not found. This center, Giraj Gogiyamat, is very good. Basement, about more than 100 devotees can sit and hear Harikatha. Also, so many Sannyasi Brahmachari can be there. And I think all are helping, Mahaprabhu, and all are helping, and you should all help. Go Premal. Akyana Tirandhasya Gyanan Jan Salakya Kapsurun Militangina Tasmay Si Guravi Bancha Kalpataru Vesya Pripasindu Vasha Patitana Pavana Vaishnavitya Namo Mahabhadanaya Krishna Prima Pradaya Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Nane Gauratya Tavai Vasmi Tavai Vasmi Najivan Prayavina Iti Pitya Raja Tangnai Mama Chandra My heart feeling, obeisance as is there, a lot of cheat out my big chagur. Om Vishnu Pashishman Bhakti Parakyan Kesha Goswami. And same in the lot of cheat out. My big chagur, Om Vishnu Pashishman Bhakti Vedan Swami. We are explaining Raya Ramadan Sambhala. We discussed two or three days, three days or two days, three days. But even we cannot explain first day slow. And in what two days rest two days, today and tomorrow. What can we explain more? You could stay another week or a day. <laughs> Anyhow, we are explaining something. We are touching this subject. If I will tell in one day all I can do, like Hanuman, ek lamp dilo, he jump and brought Sita in Ajodha. <laughs> Understand? This is a brief. <laughs> so, we are going to tell the briefs only. <clears throat> but I think that if I will come in future, I must come. Then <clears throat> I will gradually develop all this. So we have discussed that Mahaprabhu told Ramanan that what is sadhana and what is sadhana. Yesterday briefly we told you. Especially, Arunya Maharaj told something about sadhan and sadhya and sadhya. So I told you that everywhere, first sadhya is what? Established. Eh? established. A certain? Established. First, 
what is the life goal of life first thing and then how it can be received in what process what we are going to achieve it is gopi friend no and what is the process to follow gopi bhakti sadha and bhakti is sadha both Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked and he replied, Swadharma Acharane ki Vishnu Bhakti hai. Vishnu Bhakti hai. Then, Really? Swadharma Acharan is Sadhya. In real sense. Swa means? Our constitutional constitutional duty. Duty. Dharma. Is Swadharma. But here, what Ramananda has told the slok for reference, it shows that he has told about Varnasham Dharma, not Fasva Dharma. So, he told the slok, Varnasham Marcharata, Purusena Parakuman, there is no other way to satisfy Vishnu. What is the purpose you should tell? And why Mahaprabhu told it Banya? Both. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Jnana Shamakaya Chakshurun Vilatu Yena Tasmai Sri Hirveda So in the discussion where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has inquired from Ramananda Rai what is the ultimate sadhya, the ultimate goal of life so in this sequence of answers which we are now going to be hearing which Sri Ramananda Roy has given in response to this question of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu this is the first suggestion that Ramananda Roy has given Varnashra Macharavata Purushena Parapuman Vishnur Aradhyate Panta Nanya Tattosha Karanam here, he's speaking about Varn Ashram, Varn Ashram Dharma. What is Varn Ashram Dharma? In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Sri Krishna says, Chatur Varnyam Maya Shrishtam Guna Karma Vibhagasha. He says here that I am the creator in human society of the system called Chatur Varnyam or Varn Ashram Dharma. This means that by nature, within this material world, within this whole universe, God has created a system for the human society to make step-by-step -step progress in their ultimate attainment, which is to have their swadharma, as Srila Gurudev has told. That means their eternal occupational duty in relationship to the Absolute Truth, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, but, in the beginning stages the human, of human society, they are not all qualified to accept the highest process <clears throat> through which this ultimately must be obtained. So in order to be merciful to the living entities within this world, Krishna, Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of God who has created this universe, 
he has established a system called Varnashram, in which human society is divided into four different uh, categories. Uh, and actually there are four social orders and four spiritual orders. So these are divided according to guna and karma. That means in, in this world everyone takes birth uh, in a particular family, <coughs> in a particular society, and in this way their birth is determined by their previous activities and previous lives, which is called their karma. So that particular birth that they have is already set. What qualities they have within that life are earned by their previous karma. Some persons are highly intelligent. So therefore, they can perform duties which other persons who don't have the same level of intelligence can perform. So therefore, Krishna describes that just like within our body, our physical body, we have different parts of our body, like our head, our arms, our uh, belly, and our legs. So these different parts of our body perform different functions for the service of the whole body. But the head ultimately is directing all the activities. Without the head, none of the other parts of the body can function. So in the same way, the Supreme Lord has created the system of Varnashram in which human society has the Brahmin class, the intellectual class, which is compared to the head. Then there is the Kshatriya class, the administrative class, which is compared to the arms. Then there is the Vaishya class, which is the class of men who can perform, do business and agriculture and such and maintain uh, the whole social body. And finally there are the workers or laborer class called Shudras. And they are like the legs of the social body. So if Krishna describes that if a man properly follows this system of Varnashram Dharma, or in other words this uh, verse which was quoted by Ramananda Roy, it says, Varnashram Atara Vata Purushena Parapuman Vishnur Aradhyate Panta. By following this system and worshipping the Supreme Lord by executing one's occupational duties, then Nanya Tato Shakaranam. The Supreme Lord becomes satisfied by this. So this is a proper step in the right direction. Aside from these social orders, there are also four spiritual orders of life which the human beings are meant to progress a stage by stage through in their life. The first stage is called Brahmacharya. That means the student life. Then the second stage is called Grihastha. That means married life, family life, in which they take responsibility. They uh, raise children and family, and they work hard to maintain the social body like this. Grihastha. Then there's Vanaprastha life. After, after completing uh, the duties of the family life, then in order for a human being to attain spiritual perfection, he will have to give up this attachment to the family life within this world, and he will now have to start preparing himself for the final stage, which is renunciation, sannyas. So in order to uh, bridge that gap between the household life and the renounced life, oh, then he will have to become a retired, vanaprastha life, and prepare himself. Then finally, when he is qualified and he is detached from all material affairs within this world, he can take the sannyas order of life. So this is the four spiritual orders, Varna and Ashrama. So these are created by the Supreme Lord, and here Ramananda Roy is saying that this is for the benefit of human society. If someone uh, executes this, the Supreme Lord will be pleased, and aside from this, there is no other way to please the Supreme Lord. But when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard this suggestion by Ramananda Roy, his response to that was very interesting. He says, Eho Bahya, Age Kaho Ar. He told him, what you are telling is actually external. Bahya means external. Age Kaho Ar, please speak further. Please give another suggestion beyond what you are telling me now. So why did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu say that this is uh, Bahya, external? Because Varnashram Dharma, although it is leading to the, the eternal Swadharma or the Sanatam Dharma, the eternal constitutional position of the soul, but in and of itself, it is actually on the material plane, and it pertains only to the physical body and the social interactions within society. 
Huh? Ultimately, the aim of our Nasham Dharma is to satisfy the Supreme Lord. But in and of itself, it cannot really give the highest perfection unless it comes to the stage of absolute surrender and worship of the Supreme Lord through what is called pure Shuddha Bhakti. So, as we heard yesterday, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to hear about the ultimate goal of life, sadhya, and he also wanted to hear what is the sadhana, the process by which this ultimate goal of life can be attained. So, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed that this is external, then Sri Ramananda Roy considered, and now he suggested, as Mahaprabhu wanted him to suggest, the next step, which would be a higher level, more uh, near to the actual activities of the true transcendental soul, the Atma. So this is the process. Without coming to the level of the soul, and without connecting the soul in worship of the Supreme Soul, it is not possible for him to attain this sadhya, the ultimate goal of life. So we will hear now of all the other stages which he suggested. So, we have heard from Srila Gurudev and also from Pujapati Bhaktanta, Advanat Maharaj, Bhagavan Nasham Dharma. So, first of all, the goal of life is transcendental and eternal. And is attained by Sanatan Dharma, the eternal religion of the soul. So, Varnasham Dharma is not Sanatan Dharma because one's Varna and one's ashram is never Sanatan, never eternal. You will not be in the Brahmachari ashram forever, may become Grihastha, but this will also not be forever, may be Sanyasi. So, ashram can change and Varna will also change. One life, Sutra, Katriya, Brahmin. According to the modes of material nature, these things can change. So the Varnasham Dharma can never be called Sanatan Dharma. It is related to the gross body and the subtle mind and the modes of material nature. So the real goal of life of Sanatan Dharma is Prem, transcendental love for the Supreme Lord. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will always reject any suggestion given by Ramananda Rai unless that suggestion is what is known as Sarup Anubandi. Sarup Anubandi means he wants to hear something which is related to the constitutional form of the soul, the soul Swarup. So in this verse it is stated, Vanashama Charavata Purushaina Parapuma Vishnu Arajatai Pantananya Tattosha Karanam. That there is there is no other way to satisfy Vishnu but the execution of these prescribed duties in life. But the question comes, who is this Vishnu? Vishnu himself has manifested this material world, the Mahavishnu, Gabadakeshai Vishnu and the Paramatma Kirdakeshai Vishnu. So Vishnu has manifested this world and along with this world the duties which are related to this world. But the question comes, does the Atma have any eternal relationship with Vishnu? No. The Atma has no eternal relationship with uh, the manifestation of Bhagavan who is uh, performing the activity of creation, Brahma, uh, uh, maintaining the universe. Brahma is creating, Vishnu is maintaining, Lord Shiva is destroying the universes. So, it is true that one may satisfy Vishnu the Creator by performing the re activities related to the creation. But the Atma is related Jivera Swarupoy Krishnera Nityadas Krishnera Tatasta Shakti Veda Ved Prakash. The Atma has eternal relation with Krishna. And therefore, by the performance of these duties, one can rise up from the Tamagun, Rajagun, Sattvagun, and one can but be elevated to the heavenly planets. But actually, it is not possible to 
uh, become completely liberated and enter Golok Vrindavan at all, impossible by the performance of Vanasham Dharma. But there are some good sides. What is that? In Vanasham Dharma, you will have to respect your seniors. If any guest comes, you have to serve them. So a chance is there that when a sadhu is moving around, that or you will receive him in your home and serve that guest. And in this way, a chance will come to go beyond the uh, absorption in material duties and learn something about the eternal occupation of the soul, which is related to Sri Krishna. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, Eho bhaiya, or this is something external, please tell me something deeper, something which is Sarup Anubandi, related to Atma. Hey. The Varnasham Dharma, as we heard, relates to the physical body and the false, false uh, the subtle body made up of false ego and so on. Now, generally, it can be said that ashram relates to the physical body in that a person traditionally in the born ashram system a person will progress through different stages according to that person's age during the younger age during youth a person is in the brahmachari life then grihastha at a particular age or a particular time um, a person enters the renounced order and the varna system varna prasta and sannyas however the system of varna relates to a person's subtle body in other words a person does not is not a kshatriya a brahmin a kshatriya a vaishya or a shudra by birth but according to that person's nature that's the prime qualification but these things are temporary. A person's nature changes and a person does not remain in the same body for very long. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has declared Naham vipro nacha narapatir Napi vaishya na shudra Naham varini nacha grihapatir Na vanasto yatirva Kintu prajyan nikila paramananda purnam ritabdeir Gopi bhartu I am not a Brahmin, I am not a Vaishya, I am not a Kshatriya, I am not a Shudra. Neither am I a, Grih a Brahmachari, a Grihasta, a Varnaprastha, or a Sannyasi. Know that I consider myself only to be an eternal servant of the servant of the servant of Sri Krishna, who is the life and soul of the gopis and who exists in full splendor this is our true relation this is our true identity and for this reason Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Sri Roy Ramananda to speak further if Madhu Maharaj can you speak something if he likes If anything to speak. You you have something? Om Nat Gyana Timiranda Sagananjana Salakaya Chakshuru Militam Jena Tasmay Sri Gurave Namaha. In Rayamananda Sangbad, which slok has quoted here about Sadhar Mahacharana Vishnu Bhakti Hai. The slok quoted from Vishnu Puran, dialogue between take take place took place between Urva Muni and Sagar Maharaj. Sagar Maharaj asked this question to Urva Muni when he visited his royal palace. Then he quoted this verse. Varnasya Maharaja Ravata Purusena Parakuman Noiva 